Good morning and welcome to Oasis Church, a safe place to be loved, to grow, and to serve. We're excited to worship together with you today. First, a warm welcome to our visitors and guests. If this is your first, second, or third time with us, please fill out a connection card on the seat back in front of you or on the Oasis app. If this is your first time, check the first visit box and make sure to get your gift bag from the Welcome Center. If it's your second time, check second and go pick up your free Oasis t-shirt. If it's your third time or more, please check third and include your email address so we can invite you to join us at the next Growth Track event today during second service. At the conclusion of this video, we'll be taking up an offering. If you're visiting with us, please don't feel any pressure to give. This is an opportunity for regulars to support the local church. Regulars, check out an offering envelope located in the seat back in front of you for a list of easy and secure ways you can give. If you have any questions or need help, please let anyone in a green Oasis shirt know at any point during this service. If you want any information or want to register for any event in this video or on your bulletin, visit myoasisevents.com or check out the event section on the Oasis app. Before we hear today's message, let's take a moment to tell you about a few things happening around here for you and your family. That's right. Just as you heard in the welcome video, Growth Track is today. Whether you are new to the church or are a regular attender here at Oasis, we encourage you to join us if you have not gone through these amazing next steps. Growth Track is a great way to hear more about who we are and where you fit in with the family. Here at Oasis, we truly believe that involvement produces relationships. So what are you waiting for? Join us during second service today in the lounge. Youth Camp is coming up July 1st through 5th. Youth Camp is a life-changing experience where we get to get away from our normal distractions and spend some time with God. There are field games throughout the day and services at night. The cost is $250, which includes transportation, boarding, and meals. We are looking for sponsors. If you would like to donate, just designate your donation, you. I can't wait to see what God does this year. For more information, contact Pastor Chloe at chloe at myoasis.ag. Oasis Groups invites you to stop by, sign up, and get connected at their summer semester groups fair after each service right outside of the front doors of the church. It will be held today after each service right outside the main entrance. Neighborhood dinners are tonight. Neighborhood dinners are a place to come, connect, and grow with others, as well as reach out. Neighborhood dinners are divided by geographic areas, so let us help you connect with others living in your neighborhood. We meet on the first Sunday of each month over dinner and seek to develop community. The dinner is potluck style, so bring your favorite dish to share. Once again, we are excited to have you with us in service today. We pray you have a great rest of your Sunday. All right, good morning, Oasis Church. I'm so glad that you guys are here with us this morning. We are uh, continuing on and finishing today our series on habits. We've been talking about habits, small changes, big results. What are some habits in our life that we need to just practice consistently and regularly to help us grow in our faith, look more like Christ, and we've been discussing all sorts of habits. And today we're talking about the habit of honesty. The habit of honesty. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just pray that you would come this morning and that you would just fill us with your truth, with your word. I pray if there's anybody here this morning who has hurt other people with their lack of honesty, that you would really open their ears to hear and their hearts to hear and their eyes to see what you want them to know. If there's anybody here who's been hurt recently by someone's dishonesty, I pray, Lord, that you would just really encourage them and give them, Father, the healing and wholeness that they need to move on and and to find you in the middle of whatever they're walking through. And I just pray, God, that we would just humbly come before you right now and that you'd speak to our hearts, that you would help us to have an encounter with you in your precious name. Amen. So having kids really makes you realize how deep inside of our our nature as human beings is the ability to quickly become dishonest and have self-preservation. 
All it takes is catching them in something wrong, and you don't have to teach children to cover it up or lie about it or hide it. It literally comes natural for them. And so when I see kids do stuff like that, it makes me realize, God, I'm sure we drive you crazy. Uh, with just it, It's like it's in our nature. I don't know why. And recently, one of our younger ones has decided that she would rather just pee her underwear instead of go to the bathroom if she's playing and she doesn't want to stop. It's just like, it's your thing like, hey, do I want to stop what I'm doing? No. Psst. All right, now I can keep playing. Like, what's wrong? Why? Just go, just take a break and go to the bathroom. But what's killing me more than anything is not the fact that she's doing that. I mean, that's frustrating. It's the fact that you like walk by and you're like, and you catch a whiff of something. And you look and you're like, did she just pee your underwear? And they're like, no. Like, I can literally smell urine, like, emanating from your dress. Like, you, and like, no, nope, I didn't go. Did you not go to the bathroom because you wanted to keep playing? No, I didn't pee, I promise. But, you know, as adults, we're no different sometimes. People around us can smell the dishonesty. They're like... You're lying. Just admit you're lying. They can smell it. I can smell it. He can smell it. Like, what? Why, why do you do this to yourself? It's like we think we're trying to protect ourselves or we're trying to cover something up. But, but after a while, when you just develop habits of dishonesty, what starts to happen is you get so used to saying small lies or small cover-ups or small diversion statements, you don't even see it anymore. And all of a sudden, after a while, people are like, yeah, I don't really trust you. You've officially, this has happened too many times. And so for me, I wanted to talk, this is kind of a little bit of a unique and pointed subject. So there might be people here that are like, ah, oh, that doesn't really apply to me, I, whatever. But there might be some people like, thank God my husband is here listening to this sermon because I've been telling him this for six months. You know, it's either going to really directly impact you or, or whatever. But I think what's important is that we all really practice the habit of honesty. And this is something that no matter how old you are, from young to old, this is a really important habit for God's kids to grow in the habit of honesty. It is so important to me, and I think it's something that we don't pay enough attention to. Man has struggled with honesty from the beginning of time all the way back to Adam and Eve, from the very beginning. Hey, who ate this apple? And Adam started the, the typical guy response. <laughs> wasn't my fault. <laughs> I didn't do it, you know, and blame it on Eve. And from the beginning of time, honesty has been an issue. In fact, honesty is so bad that we struggle even being honest with ourselves. There's, a, there's that famous saying, to thine own self be true. We've gotten so used to being around dishonesty that we're not even honest with ourselves half the time. We, we can even convince ourselves something is true when it's not. And not just be honest with other people. Are you truly being honest with ourselves? We, we revert back to where we were with kids when we messed something up and they said, who did this? It wasn't me. And as, as adults, we still do the same thing. We, we hide it under the carpet. We just It's self-preservation kicks in. We, we don't really value honesty because honesty usually means I'm in trouble. And dishonesty is buying me time before I have to deal with it. And we put more value on dishonesty, but what we don't realize is we develop habits of dishonesty, we're always in trouble. Like instead of just addressing things and getting it in the open and saying, let's just have an honest conversation, what we don't realize is life is truly much easier when you live that way. And when you're always in a habit of covering things up, it gets worse and worse and worse. And I hope our teenagers are here to watch this. Parents, play them the uh, video later on the app. No one wants to think of themselves as a liar. That feels pretty harsh. I'm not a liar. But what about harmless lies? Let me ask you this. How many times have you said something that wasn't fully the truth? I'm going to test you. Ready? How do you answer it when you're asked, does this dress make me look fat? You're going to get in a lot of trouble right there. You have a, your brain is just racing. How do I answer this question? How about the officer asks you, do you know why I pulled you over? Yes, because I was going 20 miles per hour over the speed limit of school zone. All right, just give me a ticket. I don't know what to tell you. Or how about this? Daddy, this is a hard one. You ready? Is Santa Claus real? 
Honesty. Now l- listen, according to the New York Times, 91% of North Americans lie regularly. The Washington Post reports people lie 92% of the time to save face and 98% of the time to keep from offending someone else. We feel like our dishonesty is merited because we're doing someone else a favor. And we justify our dishonesty because we have a good reason to lie. Here's a definition of lying. Ready? Lying is simply an intention to mislead. When you tell a half-truth, you're telling a whole lie. You can lie by falsifying information. And in many cases, this is what people do. You can lie by withholding information. In fact... You can even lie, listen, without saying a single word. And it's important for us to really look at honesty. Anytime you are misleading in any type of way, you are lying. It is dishonest. The definition of lying is intention to mislead. The main idea this morning is this. If you want to be trusted, develop a habit of honesty. If you feel people don't trust you, you have to earn that trust back by developing a habit of honesty. If you've lost that trust, chances are you have developed a habit of dishonesty or a habit of poor choices. But to get trust back, you have to develop that habit of honesty. Lying is a symptom of a deeper root issue. And until you fix the root issue, you're going to have a hard time of fixing, fix the, fixing the lie. Because it's going to keep coming up. Anyone who knows gardening knows if a tree is unhealthy, you have to address the roots. If the roots are unhealthy, the tree is going to be unhealthy. You can spend all the time you want on the top of the tree, but if the roots are unhealthy, the tree will continue to be unhealthy. If your roots are not addressed as to why you are lying, then you're going to keep lying. And until you really get to the root of why you're lying. Luke 6.45 says, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. It says in contemporary English version, it says, your words show what is in your heart. Your words show what is in your heart. Your words show where you are rooted, what your root system looks like. Your words are just a reflection of where your heart is. And we spend so much time, especially in our culture as Americans, that whatever goes on in here, that's our business. We're only accountable to what we speak. But God says, no, you're accountable to what goes on in here. I am watching what goes on in here. And if this is unhealthy, this will be unhealthy. If this is healthy, this will be healthy. We get all hung up over words when we really should ask ourselves, why am I lying? Why do I feel the need to cover things up? Not, am I lying? Why do I keep feeling the need to save face? Who am I trying to impress? Who am I trying to defend? Why am I attracted to deceitfulness? Why is that my go-to and not my non-go-to? Why does it feel like the second someone confronts me, my instinct is to lie? Why is that in my life? And if you don't get to the why it's in your life, it's going to keep happening. And it's good for your children as well. Why do you feel you need to lie to mom and dad? Are you afraid? Do you feel like you're going to get in trouble? Don't you realize your life is going to be so much more difficult this way? Like, if really, if that's what we're talking about, why do you feel the need to do it? See, you are a tree. And if you're planted in the soil of resentment, you're going to produce fruit of resentment. And until you address that hurt and that resentment, that fruit's going to continue to produce in your life. But if you're planted in Christ, you'll produce the fruit of Christ. You produce that fruit. And the more you grow in Christ, the more your nature should be one to crave honesty, to crave transparency, to crave light, attracted to light, no longer attracted to darkness. Before Christ, I was attracted to darkness. I liked living in secrecy. I didn't want people knowing my business. But in Christ, I'm attracted to the light now. I like things in the light. I don't like to feel the enemy has a grip on my life, and he always is gripping my life when I live in darkness. So I don't want to live there anymore because it's scary there because he always can do whatever he wants with me in the darkness. But in the light, he has no more grip on me. So I like living in the light. And the more you grow in Christ, you like the light. It's, you're attracted to the light. John 8, says this. The devil does not stand in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks what is natural to him, for he is a liar and the father of lies and half-truths. Yet Christ, in John 14, 6, says, I am the truth. 
Jesus says, I am the truth. When you live a life of deceit and half-truths and covering up, that doesn't come from above. That comes from below. And as you grow in your faith and become more like Christ, you are more attracted to living in the light. It's what you want. It's what you want for your family. It's what you want for your relationships. It's what you want for yourself. And it has nothing to do with the fact that, oh, i got to be honest because I'm tired of getting in trouble. No, you desire honesty. You want to be true to yourself. You want to be honest with these things. 1 Corinthians 13, 6 says, love rejoices in the truth. The more you grow, you rejoice in the truth. You don't even want to let the foxholes of little white lies in anymore. You don't even want to let the half-truths in anymore. You don't want that. It's, that represents your old life, not your new life in Christ. So what I want to do is, because getting to the root of the issue is so important, I want to look at four basic lies that people say, and I want to talk about what the root of that lie is. Because if this is something that you deal with, this kind of lie, then it's important for you to know what the root of that is so you can really address that root in your life. And maybe there's someone in your life that needs to hear this. Write this down and take good notes as well. But number one, the first kind of lie is called the cruel lie. The cruel lie. And the root, the motivation, when you feel the need to give a cruel lie, it's usually because you have hurt and resentment in your life. That's the root. You're hurting. Somebody hurts you. Maybe that person you're lying to hurt you, or maybe it has nothing to do with that person. You're just taking out on them. But you, are, you have hurt and resentment in your life that's not dealt with. And the cruel lie says, I'm hurting, so I'm going to hurt you. I'm going to say something that defames you. I'm going to say something that slanders you. I'm going to say something that's malicious and not true. I don't really care because really my goal is to hurt you. And that's a cruel lie. A cruel lie. Proverbs 10, 18 says this. He that hideth hatred with lying lips. Or you could even say he that hideth hurt. Or he that hideth resentment. Or he that hideth unforgiveness. Or he that hideth those things with lying lips. And he that uttereth a slander, a false statement, a malicious statement, a defamatory statement, is a fool. Oftentimes, we excuse ourselves from our words because we feel we're justified. Why? Because we're hurting. Oh, I can say that. Why? I'm hurting. I don't really care what I say. Why? Because I'm hurting. I don't really, I can say what I want, and I, and I don't care what that does to you. You know why? Because I'm hurting, and I don't care. Be very careful not to let someone else's sin become your sin by how you respond. Even if you're hurting, it doesn't excuse you from acting out certain ways. You are still accountable to God for your actions. And God's not going to look at your actions and say, well, all right, I, you were hurting. I'll let that one slide. You were having a bad day. We're still accountable for our actions. And so if you are attracted to cruel lies, you need to just say, God, why am I hurting so bad? And why do I feel the need to hurt other people? And help me find healing in my heart over that because I don't want to keep hurting or live in cruel lies. That's a, you got to deal with that hurt and resentment issue. Things like, you never do that for me. You always speak to me like that. You, they never do that for you? Well, not always. They always speak to you like that? Well, just right now they are. That's just how I feel. You're hurting. You just, you're pulling stuff up out of nowhere because you're hurting. Be honest and speak truths. Don't speak lies. The second kind of lie that we see is the conceited lie. The conceited lie. And the motivation behind the conceited lie is really just straight up insecurity. Straight up insecurity. This is the kind of lie you tell to impress others, to create an image to brag, to cover up low self-esteem. I make fun of pastor friends who are like, hundreds got saved. Really, there's only 50 in attendance. You know, whatever. I'm sure it was great. Like the conceited lie. Like, like you feel the need to boast or to brag or to puff up. And that, those kind of lies come out of insecurity. It's just straight insecurity. And I have learned to be very leery of people who say that they're really good at something. 
like, I, I almost, like, it's gotten really kind of bad, actually. I, I'm just kind of overly skeptical if, if they're like, oh, I'm really good at that. Well, yeah, I'm sure you are. But when someone else says they're really good at that, all right, there's something to that. Because we live in a society of social media where we, we have a culture of make yourself look better than you really are. Why? Because it feeds this endless animal inside of you that somehow you think you need that. It's, you see it in, in our younger generation where they post something of their most beautiful picture and they just every five minutes they're checking for, you're beautiful, you're beautiful, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. It's just feeding it. It's feeding it. And it doesn't make them more secure. It makes them more insecure. And we have to teach our kids and our students, you are beautiful just as you are in your worst moment. You are beautiful. God made you, and you just need to be okay with who God made you to be. And don't apologize for that. Because we live in such an insecure world of comparison. They're better than me. They're smarter than me. We do it at work. We do it in the, in, with relationships. We do it everywhere. And we, we live in this comparison trap. And what happens is that leads to conceited lies. Proverbs 10, 19 says, don't talk too much. For it fosters sin. Be sensible and turn off the flow. When someone is always talking about this, themselves, Suspect insecurity in their life and exaggerated truths. Proverbs 11.3 says, People who can't be trusted are destroyed by their own dishonesty. Now let me give you a little side note. I personally don't believe exaggerating or hamming up a story is wrong if you're telling them I'm hamming this story up. Like, it's fun to ham up a story, you know. You, you, you know you didn't walk 10 miles to school when you were young in the snow there and back uphill both ways. Everybody knows that, you know. But, but it's when you tell a story as if it's truth, that's where I start to have a problem with it. If you say, oh, look, let me just have fun with this story, then ham it up and whatever. In our family, we like to joke a lot. So in our family, we have, it's called the 30-second rule. That you have to tell somebody you're joking with 30 seconds or it officially becomes a lie. So like if you're saying like, hey, I did, the dog ran away, oh, he's lost, oh, he's hiding in the closet, whatever, oh. If, if 30 seconds pass, it becomes a lie. You can't keep joking. You have to tell them the truth within 30 seconds. So, but we like to have fun and we like to ham it up. But honesty is a value in our family. So to address this kind of lie, though, in your life, if you do this a lot, you have to work on the insecurity issue. Why? Again, the why. Why do you feel you need to keep talking about yourself? Why do you feel you need to keep telling people how great you are? Why, why do you feel you need that? Proverbs says you're better off sitting at the back of the table and having the host call you up than going up to the very front yourself and having them send you to the back. You're better off doing that. So just say, God, between you and me, I'm going to be myself. I'm not going to brag on myself. I'm not going to try to make something happen that's not there. I'm going to put my head down at work. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to just be honest. I'm going to have integrity. And when you, if you promote me, you promote me. If you don't, you don't. But between you and me, we are good. And I'm not going to live in this comparison trap. And I'm not going to continually give conceited lies, convenient lies, conceited lies, excuse me. The third kind of lie that we see said is the convenient lie. And this is the one that happens all the time. The motivation behind the convenient lie is straight up laziness. This is the kind of lie I told all the time to my parents when I didn't want to do something growing up. This is the kind of lie you tell to avoid involvement simply because it takes too much time and too much effort to tell the truth. Ready? Let me give you a big one. We do it all the time. Can you help me move on Saturday? Oh, I can't. You can't. If you were being honest, yeah, I can, but I just don't really want to. Like, that's really what the answer should be. But we don't like to tell people that because it's rude. So it's easier to say, oh, I can't. I'm busy. You're on Netflix watching it for five hours. You're not busy. You know, these are convenient lies. That for us, ah, they're so small. We dismiss them. But what starts to happen is we develop this habit that before we know it, every other word is this convenient, not fully true statement. And then we don't even realize it, but we start to just talk that way. We start to think that way. We start to live that way. And instead of, and all it takes is someone poking at us and it's like, all right, let, why not? 
oh, you're not supposed to ask me that. I said I can't because I don't want to talk about it. Now you're pressing me. I have to go volunteer for something really quick so I can say I was busy because now I'm really in trouble. And then we just start getting out of that lie. But this is important, I think, for us to be careful not to develop constant cowardly habits of lying. And the motivation uh, behind uh, the convenient lie is basically straight up laziness. Proverbs 28, 23 says this. In the end, people appreciate frankness more than flattery. I, honestly, I, when I was re- as I really tried to get better at this, it was so uncomfortable. I can help you move. But we've been so busy lately, I was hoping to kind of take it easy with my family today. Oh, thanks for telling me. Yeah, no problem. Oh, all right, I got out of that one, and I didn't even have to lie. You know, at first it was really weird talking this way because you had developed such a bad habit of doing the other way, but it's important to really think about the words that come out of your mouth. And lastly, the last kind of lie we see is the cowardly lie. The cowardly lie is motivated by fear. This is the kind of lie you tell to escape consequences, avoid punishment, or protect yourself. This comes in the form of a diversion statement, the cowardly lie. I feel like this is often the lie that we battle with the most in the sense that it becomes obvious because it's hurtful to other people. Because with this lie, this is what's tricky. Remember, lying is the devil is the father of lies. When he lies, it's in his nature. He's the father of lies and half-truths. And the thing about the cowardly lie is it's the most twisted of the lies. It has just enough that in a court of law, they can't pin you at saying you said the wrong thing. But the intention of lying is to mislead. And so people who get good at this, they have a twisted nature about them because it's this constant walk of deception. And it's like they, they get so good at it That you can't really pin them with, well, technically, I didn't say that. Technically, that's not how I worded it. Technically, when we talked, I didn't say that. I said this, if you remember, it's like slippery and sneaky. They're like a little attorney. And it's like you try to paint a picture of a 100-piece puzzle, but you only give them 20 pieces. Hey, and I didn't say that other piece. And the thing about this is you have to realize that fear is one of the biggest motivators here. Fear of being caught. Fear of being called out, fear of having to deal with something you're not ready to deal with, fear of light showing into a place in your life that has been tucked away and guarded in secret, and that's your safe zone. You, you can put on a show out here, but this is your space, and then when you start having to be honest, light comes in here, and light scares dark places. And so this is the one that you tend to see people fight over and wiggle with. I don't know anyone that's really gotten healthy that has not learned to open up all the places of their heart and say, I want to live an open, transparent, honest life where Jesus is in charge of all of me, and I don't want to keep living in this diversion secrecy anymore. I want to live out in the light. They're attracted to the light. And this is the kind that you have to be careful of because oftentimes the wording might technically be true. But the motivation behind what they are saying is diversion. And if you're talking to someone and the motivation is diversion, that is lying. Proverbs 10.10 says, someone who holds back the truth causes trouble. You are responsible for painting a complete and accurate picture without spinning it or diverting it in your favor. You are not national news. Being honest, painting that picture. Proverbs 29, 25 says, fearing people is a dangerous trap, but to trust the Lord means safety. What does trusting the Lord mean? They might not know what really happened, but who does know? Jesus is truth. Jesus is light. And to fear the Lord saying, I might have been able to get away with that, but I can't get away from it from you. And the more you do things like that, the more your nature, it's like you, set, you close yourself off from God being able to do in your heart what he wants you to do. And in order for you to win this, you have to address the fear issue. Why am I so afraid of being honest? What is really stopping me from being honest? If you want to be trusted, develop the habit of honesty. To develop the habit of honesty, you have to work on the root of your line. Now as we close, I'm going to leave you with this thought. 
There's two ways to speak the truth. You should speak the truth completely, and you should speak the truth consistently. This is such a much better way to live your life. You know why? Because you don't have to remember anything anymore. You get so stuck in this onion of what did I tell them and then what did I tell them and what am I kind of hiding but what am I allowed to say? You get lost in this bubble of drama that if every time you just spoke the truth consistently and completely, you don't have to worry about stuff anymore. It's like a lighter load off of your shoulders. John Maxwell describes a leadership principle called coins in your pocket, and that leadership principle applies to honesty. When people first meet you, they give you automatically a certain amount of coins in your pocket. When you earn their trust, when you do things right, you get more coins. When you break their trust, when you do things that would violate that, you lose those coins. And after a certain point, you get to the place where in their mind, You just emptied out your pocket of coins. I don't trust you anymore. And you get classified now as a non-trusting person. And if you want to get that trust back, you have to earn those coins back. It doesn't come with an apology right off the bat. It doesn't come with a good, hearty conversation over lunch. It comes from earning those coins back. And you earn those coins back by speaking the truth consistently and completely. And if you can speak that, you get those coins back. And it's important. And don't be mad at other people if you've burned all your coins through your pocket and they don't trust you. Well, I said I was sorry. Earn it back. Show them. Your words got you in trouble. Your words aren't going to get you out of trouble. Your actions have to prove that you're now serious. And if you can live that way where you speak completely, you speak consistently, I promise you will get those coins back. And you'll have more of a value of integrity and honesty than you used to have before because you worked too hard to get there. And the problem about coins is it only takes one little lie. It only takes one misleading statement and the coin goes back. But you have to say, speak truth in its entirety to get the whole coin back. So that's why it's important to just speak it completely and consistently all the time. Colossians says, <clears throat> and stop lying to each other. You've given up your old way of life with its habits. If you are struggling with this, what do you do? You have to admit you have a tendency to lie, and you have to stop. You have to get out in the light. You have to do that. But secondly, you have to ask yourself, why am I lying? Get to the root of the issue. Why do I feel the need to lie? Is it because I don't trust you? Is it because I'm insecure? Is it because I'm afraid? Like, am I just straight up lazy? Why, Why do I feel like this has become habit forming for me and get to that root issue? Let's stand. Why is it important to live in honesty? This is why it's important, John 8, 32. The truth shall set you free. Do you see that? I want you to mull on that verse right now. Why is it important to pursue honesty? Because the truth shall set you free. Truth unites, lies divide. Listen, the truth might hurt a whole lot at first, but it's better. The truth, lying is like a rotten tooth in your mouth. If you keep covering it up, it just keeps spreading and the infection gets worse and your mouth hurts worse and worse and you just cover up worse and worse and we're afraid of pulling that tooth. Why? Because it's painful, right? That's what the truth is. When you first speak the truth, it's painful. You rip that tooth out, gums come with it, blood comes with it. It's hard at first. At first, it's hard. But once you get that tooth out and you let that mouth heal, it's better than living in this constant state of an infected mouth over and over and over again. And if you are having a hard time speaking the truth, it's because fear is keeping you from it. So ask yourself this question. If fear is keeping me from doing that, is that coming from God or is that coming from the devil? Because God doesn't use fear to stop you from living in the light. God knows the truth will set you free. He knows when you're in the light, there will be freedom for you. And he wants you to get there. It's not him that's making you afraid. So think of it as like that rotting tooth. You pull it out, but you have to get it out of your mouth. Let's close our eyes. Uh, One last scripture, then we'll close our eyes. Rather, let let our lives lovingly express truth in all things, speaking truly, dealing truly, and living truly. I'm going to invite the ushers up at this time. We're going to pass out communion, and we're going to close with group communion today. But if you want to be trusted this morning, you have to develop the habit of honesty. 
Develop the habit of honesty. You guys can go ahead and pass those elements out whenever you're ready. I want to talk to two people here this morning. Maybe you're here and you have a bad habit of being honest. Maybe you have broken people's trust recently in your life. Maybe for you, it was a straight up cruel lie. You just hurt people. Maybe for you, you just have gotten so used to convenient lies. It's just, you never really address the issue. You use your words to deflect and you just bounce it away from you. Maybe, maybe for you, it's an insecure lie where you try to puff yourself up it's way too much. You're just, you feel the need for people to value you and you're, you've caught up in that lie of thinking that your identity can come from other people and you're not finding it in Christ. Or maybe for you, it's fear. Maybe you're, you're, you're the king lawyer or the queen lawyer when it comes to diversion statements. Technically, you never say anything wrong. But you know you're diverting. And that's lying. And until you acknowledge that and say, you know what, God? I am lying. Basically, I'm a liar. I, I do it all the time. But I want to get this out in the open, and I don't want this to be my nature anymore. Because the devil is a liar and the father of lies. It's in his nature. He lives in half-truths. Jesus lives in the light. He lives in truth. And at some point, if you want to grow in your faith like Christ, you have to not live in that world of half-lies anymore. You have to change those habits. Or maybe you're here, you've been hurt by somebody from their dishonesty. I believe God wants to help heal you this morning. Because if there's anyone that's been hurt by people's dishonesty, it's Jesus. And he knows what it feels like. Maybe you've been lying to God. All right, God, I'll start serving you. Just get me this job, get me this deal, and really, I'll, I'm going to make it worth your while, God. All right, God, I just need to get through this season. Then I'll start going back to church. All right, God, I just need to... I just need to get through this stressful situation. Then I'll start being better for my family. I won't be so mean at home. I, I can't fathom changing right now. The life's too crazy. But when it settles down, then I'll. Or maybe you're lying to yourself right now. And the whole time I have spoken things that if you talk to people close to you, they're like, that's them, that's them, that's them, that's them. And you're sitting there going, I'm fine. To thine own self be true. We do this once a month as a church. If you're not a believer or this is something that it, you don't take serious, please don't participate in this. This is something that we do. It's very, it's an act of worship. And this is also a time to look inside and make sure there's no unconfessed sin in your life. So take a minute to do that right now and say, God, how are you and I doing? If you're here this morning and Jesus is not Lord of your life, you do allow me to say a simple prayer. Maybe you used to be close to God and you've drifted, or maybe it's, you've never really been there. But you want to change that. You've acknowledged that you are away from Him, and you don't want it to be like that anymore. You want to live for Him and let Him back into that place of your heart. Would you raise your hand so I can pray with you before we close? I want to give everyone a chance. Anybody want to make that right before we move on? Go ahead now and search your heart. See that there's nothing inside. Maybe for you it is honesty or dishonesty. Maybe for you it's something else. But say, Lord, how's my head space and my heart space doing? Because I can fool everyone else in this world, but I can't fool you. You know every thought, every motive behind every feeling. You know it all. And I'm not going to lie to you, God, because that would just be stupid. God, how are we doing? On the night that Jesus was betrayed, they were in Jerusalem for Holy Week, celebrating feasts that had gone on for thousands of years. And on the night when they celebrated Passover, back when their early, early fathers were delivered from Egypt, when they would took the lamb's blood, put it over their doorpost, and the angel death went through and passed over every house that had that. 
and killed off the firstborn of every other home that didn't have that. And that was the straw that broke the camel's back that allowed Israel to be free. They celebrated that every year and thanked God. This was a very special holy week for them. And as they were celebrating Passover, Jesus, that became what is now known as the Last Supper because that was the last time that he ate with his disciples. And he did something really crazy and out of the ordinary. He stood up and started handing out bread and said, I want you guys to all take this bread. And when you eat it, I want you to remember me that this represents my flesh that I am about to give for you. They're like, what? And now we know what he was referring to. So with all the worship in your heart and in your life, whenever you're ready, can you take of the bread? This is something that from the early church, there's two things that it's called ordinances. These are two practices that we continue to hold that dates all the way back to the church of Acts. That's communion and water baptism, two things that tie us all the way back to the early church that we continually practice. So whenever you're ready as a way of remembering Jesus and thanking him, go ahead and take of the bread. This represents his body, his flesh, that he became God-made flesh. He came down and took our pain. He was beaten for us. He, he didn't have to go through that, but he did. And take it and just thank him with your own words. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done for me, for what you've done for us. And then after they did that, he took the cup. And he says, this cup represents my blood. You have been in a covenant relationship with God up until this point. There has been certain things that he has mandated from you. Ways that you sacrifice. Ways that you pray. Ways that you go to the altar. Things you have to do when you sin. You have to do this, 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 and this. That's been a covenant you've had up until that point. But I am about to change all that. I'm not going to abolish it. I'm going to fulfill it. It's now going to be made more perfect in me. He didn't throw it out the window. He just made it better now found in him. And he said, I'm, what I'm about to do is going to be a new covenant that God has with his people that is through me. That when you go through me now, you have a new covenant with me. This is why I have to do this. And when, you, when I do this, you now have direct access to my father more than they ever had before. You now have the ability to have the Holy Spirit in your life more than ever before. Everything is going to change by me doing this. And I want you to remember me always in the way you live. And then whenever you take this cup, let it be a reminder to you what I have done for you. And you don't lose sight of that in your life. Whenever you're ready, take the cup. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for what you've done here this morning. I want to invite our altar team up front, and I'm going to leave you with a closing question. If you want to be trusted, develop the habit of honesty. If there's something we can pray for you about, please come down and seek prayer. We'll let the band worship for a few minutes, and there will be a little sign that comes up that basically says there's not a formal dismissal. Leave if you need to. And when you do, make sure you check out our group's fair outside and look at our group, see if, there's, if you want to get connected in any way. And if you've never been to Growth Track, go ahead and hang out for second service in the lounge and stay for that as well. But in a minute, when those lower thirds come up, you can quietly be dismissed. But if you're still praying, feel free to still stay and pray. But let me pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that as we seek you in this challenge and this uh, time of asking you what do you want us to know, that you'd speak to our hearts in your name. Amen. Go ahead, Melissa. Thank you.